I have several issues with this gospel reading. <laughs> this is not one of my favorite stories out of the Bible. Um, and there's many things that we don't know. And there's too many, un- there's too many unknowns in this story. And there's so many things happening in there. It's hard for us to look at. The first one that hits me is, this man has so much faith that his faith has healed him. Healed his slave, right? So how many of you have ever prayed for someone that you love that they would be healed? And how many times didn't it happen? Some, maybe not all the time. So then was your faith not good enough? I've said this up here before, and for those of you who weren't here when I preached that sermon, um, no, the healing of your loved ones has nothing to do with how your faith is. It has nothing to do with the strength of your faith, the amount of your faith, any of that. That doesn't matter. That's one of the problems I have with this verse because it makes it this set of verses because it makes it look like that if you have strong enough faith that no matter what you ask for, it's going to happen. There's a lot of other questions with this verse, too. Like, how did this centurion learn about Jesus? Number one. Right? Because this centurion's in Capernaum. And Jesus, was Jesus ever in Capernaum? We have some people going, some people going. Yes, actually, back in Luke chapter 3 or 4, it talks about how he went to his hometown and they wanted him to do the things that he had done in Capernaum. And then after that, it expounds on what he had actually done in Capernaum. And it turns out that Jesus was in Capernaum almost every Sabbath, teaching in the temple and doing many wonderful things. So the people in Capernaum would have known about Jesus. They would have known who he was and what he had come to do and what he was doing in all of the world. So it was possible that the centurion heard about Jesus because he was coming to preach and teach in the synagogue that who built? Who? Who? The centurion, right? It says in the reading that the centurion went to the Jewish elders and and asked them to go to Jesus to say, tell him to come to my house to heal my slave. And the, the Jewish elders went and said, he is a very worthy man. He's done many things for our people, including building our synagogue, our temple. Why would the centurion build the temple? We don't know, but money... This is probably the bigger answer. Say it louder, Clyde. To keep the peace. He brokered with the people that were living there by doing something good for them so that they would do something good for him, which is not cause any trouble. Right? He understands that this is like a system, barter system, right? We have to do things for you so you'll do things for us. He set it up so that the Jewish people would see him as someone that they could trust and someone that they could listen to. But then when these, the other question that comes from this is why when he sent the Jewish elders to go and get Jesus and bring him to his house, when he heard that they were coming to his house, did he send other people to go out and tell Jesus not to come anymore? All right, because that's what he does. First, he sends the elders to go get Jesus because his slave is about to die, which is an interesting thing in and of itself because slaves, as we think about them, were, were property and only property. And they were there to do the will of the master. And if they couldn't do the will of the master, what would the master do? Dispose of them and get another one, right? Slavery in this time is a little different. And actually, one of the second time that the word for slave is used in the, in the reading when he sends his friends to Jesus to say, just say the word and my slave will be healed, the word there could also be translated child. So this centurion felt for this slave as it was a member of his own family. It wasn't just an indentured servant, someone who was there to do his will and to take care of his house and to do things for him. This was a part of his household. He had feelings for this person more than just it's a piece of property. Right. He actually the centurion actually cared for this for this slave. But why when he sent the elders to go get Jesus to bring him, he sent other people out to go and say, don't come to my house. Because I'm not worthy. 
Who here is worthy to have Jesus come to their house? Why do you think you're not worthy to have Jesus come to your house? Is it because it's a mess? Because trust me, Jesus already knows that. (laughs) Is it because he's going to see something that he shouldn't see? You don't have to. He's already seen that. Is it because of the person that you are and the things that you've done? But the centurion sends his friends and Jesus says, not even in Israel have I seen such faith. And there's the other issue that I have with this text is, where is this faith that Jesus sees? What is the faith that Jesus sees? Because the explanation goes on. I am a I am a a Roman centurion, which means he had the charge over a hundred men. So he has a hundred men under him. We don't know what kind of a leader he is or anything, but we know that this man knows that when he tells one of his hundred men to go, that they go. And when he tells one of his hundred men to come, they come. And when he tells a slave to do this, they do it. Why? Because if they don't, they're going to get in trouble for it. And that's what Jesus sees. And that's what he says. Never have I seen such faith. Is that faith? What is faith? What is faith? You see, it is actually faith. If we take it on the understanding that the word faith actually is two other words that we have translated in our English language. The word in Greek for faith is actually three words for us. um, Which have really different meaning, but were completely interchangeable in the Greek language. Jesus says, never have I seen such trust in all of Israel. Because the word for faith in Greek means faith. It also means believe. It also means trust. Because this centurion did know who Jesus was. He knew that Jesus had the power to command health and evil spirits. And that if Jesus said that his slave was going to be healed, that his slave was going to be healed. Because he'd heard the stories and he believed them. And he trusted that Jesus had this power. And he didn't believe that he was worthy enough to come to Jesus himself. So he sent those who could broker the relationship for him. And then sent other people to say, don't bother coming, just have it be said. And Jesus sees all of this and he says, never before have I seen such faith. Never before have I seen such trust. Never before have I seen such belief in the power of what God has come here to do. And so here's the thing that we need to see from our Roman centurion this morning. Because he is the one who serves as a model of what makes someone worthy. Because what I really want to see is when I ask the question, who is worthy to have Jesus come to their house? Every hand should go up. And why? It was in one of the verses of the song we sang this morning, I think. Or no, it was in the confession. When asked the question, are you worthy for Jesus to come and visit? The answer undoubtedly in our own minds is no, because we're not worthy to have Christ come to us. But we are worthy because when we were dead in our trespasses, God made us alive together with Christ, nailing the record of our sins to the cross. And because of the fact that Jesus went to the cross, each and every one of us is worthy to have Jesus come to our house, to have Jesus come into our lives, to have Jesus be in party with us, wherever that may be. 
And the centurion shows us this as a model of what makes someone worthy because he has compassion for the sick. Someone in a position of weakness. He bridges the gaps between ethnic groups. He's, he built the synagogue for them in Capernaum and he's building a bridge and a gap to gap the, whole, the divide between the Romans and the Jewish people. He seeks to, be, he seeks to benefit others, right? He wants his slave to be healed. He respects the convictions of others. He respected the fact that he shouldn't go to Jesus because he's not Jewish. He is humble about himself. He says he's not worthy to have Jesus come to him. While such attitude and actions can make us worthy before others, what counts before Christ is faith. The belief that Jesus has the power to do what is right and that he will do it. Right? The Jewish elder said that the man was worthy because of what he had and what he had done. Right? He was Wealthy, and he had done many things for them. But Jesus sees in him a trust. Jesus sees in him the belief in what Jesus has come to do. And that's what makes us worthy. You can listen to everybody else out there tell you that you're not worth anything. Because they tell you, right? You've heard it from other places. And we can tell it to ourselves. We tell ourselves as Lutherans, we're really good at telling ourselves everything we've done wrong. But here's the thing you need to hear this morning. And the centurion shows us how to do it. To look out for others. And to know and to trust in the promises that you've seen. Because if you want, if you ever question if if God is going to be there for you, if God is going to to uphold the promises, ask me, ask anyone else around you, look at the Bible. There are many of us here who can tell stories about how God has been there and will be there. And does it happen all the time the way that we want it to? No. But that's where our faith and our trust come in. To hold on to Jesus and know that He's always with us. Trusting in the promises that he's told us. Knowing that he alone makes us worthy. No matter what anyone else says or what anyone else does. God loves you because you are you. A unique creation made by him. And when he drops you, you will bounce just like the ball did. And he'll pick you back up and hold you in the palm of his hand because that's what he does. And his love is proficient enough for each and every one of us. So you are worthy. Just trust in the promises. Believe that Jesus is God's son and have faith that everything that he's told us is absolutely true.